in chapter 5, we did all our derivatives and integrals of transcendental functions like natural log, um, log base a, a to the x, inverse trig, and we also had our formula for the derivative of an inverse function. And then likewise, we did the integrals of the same functions as well. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at derivatives of some more complex types of functions um, rather than the straightforward ones. Uh, you can look at the review sheets for practice on some of the more basic ones, but I wanted to hit the ones that were a little bit harder where I have to talk more about the techniques. So for example, in the first one here, I have y equals 3 to the 7 arc cosine x. So for this one, we're going to use our derivative of a to the x. And the derivative of a to the x was a to the x. So 3 to the 7 arc cosine of x, ln of a, which in this case is going to be natural log of 3. And then you have to also apply your chain rule. So derivative of 7 arc cosine x is negative 7 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So remember, any of the inverse co-functions were negative as a result. Now, something like y equals secant x to the x squared in example 2. You can't use the a to the x formula because that only works if a is a constant. So the only way you could do this one was to actually natural log both sides. So natural log of y equals x squared natural log of secant x using your log properties. And then you take the derivative of both sides implicitly. So 1 over y dy dx. And on the right hand side, we're going to use product rule. So x squared times 1 over secant x times the derivative of secant, which is secant tangent, plus 2x times the natural log of secant x. And then your final step was to multiply both sides by y to solve for dy dx. So dy dx ends up equaling secant x to the x squared. And then you have left over x squared tangent x plus 2x natural log of the quantity secant x. Um, we also did regular logs and not just natural logs. So for a regular log problem, what you do is a change of base. So you rewrite this as the natural log of arc secant of x all over natural log of 10. And now you take the derivative of this. ln of 10 is a constant, so just write it on the outside. And then take the natural log of arc secant of x. So that's going to be 1 over arc secant of x times the derivative of arc secant of x, which is 1 over absolute value of x square root of x squared minus 1. And then we did our derivatives of our inverse function. So first we had to make sure that the inverse function actually existed. And the way you did that was you had to determine if the function was monotonic, meaning it was always increasing or it was always decreasing. And that meant with the derivative that the derivative was always positive or always negative. So we're going to take the derivative of f. f prime of x equals 5x to the fourth plus 18x squared, which is always greater than or equal to 0, which means the function is always increasing, and therefore it's monotonic. So that means we can actually find an inverse function. And the formula for the derivative of an inverse function was 1 over f prime f inverse of x. If I substitute in the 5, and I want to find the derivative of the inverse function at 5, we're going to do 1 over f prime f inverse of 5. Now, the first thing we have to do is figure out what the f inverse of 5 is actually equal to. Since this is an inverse function, instead of putting 5 in for the x, I'm going to put 5 in for the y value. So we're going to have 5 equals x to the fifth plus 6x cubed plus 1. And you kind of got to guess and check for the value of x. So in this case, x equals negative 1 works, because you get negative 1 minus 6 plus 12, which equals 5. So now, in place of f inverse of 5, I'm going to put in negative 1. So the derivative of my inverse function at 5 is going to be 1 over f prime of 1. And now you take your derivative of f prime, which we did up above, 5x to the fourth plus 18x squared, and substitute in x equals 1. So you get 1 over 5 plus 18. 
and the derivative of the inverse function at x equals 5 is therefore 1 over 23. So those are some of the different types of derivatives we did in chapter 5. Um, we also did a bunch of different types of integrals, so I have five different examples here that I will go through one at a time. First of all, let's start with cosecant of 2x minus 1. So we learned the derivative or integral of cosecant, cotangent, secant, and tangent. All of those involve natural log. And you could also do a u substitution. So here, let u equal 2x minus 1. Your derivative then would be 2. So dx is going to equal 1 half du. And this gets consequently rewritten as cosecant of u du over 2. So the integral of cosecant is negative natural log of cosecant plus cotangent. So if you replace the u, you get negative 1 half natural log of the absolute value of cosecant 2x minus 1 plus cotangent 2x minus 1 plus c. So there's our first one. Um, in the second one here, what you are going to do is split it up into two terms. So this one is going to equal the integral of 5x over 7x squared plus 1 and the integral of 3 over 7x squared plus 1. So if I start with the first one, notice we can do a u substitution. We let u equal 7x squared plus 1. The derivative is 14x, and notice I have an x in the top then that I can replace. So x dx would be du over 14. And so this first integral I can rewrite as 1 over u, 5 14 du, and the integral is therefore going to be 5 14 natural log of the absolute value of u, or 5 14 natural log of 7x squared plus 1. Now typically you need absolute values around the um, 7x squared plus 1, but I already know it's always going to be positive, so that's okay as it. Over here, this is actually an arc tangent setup because I have no x's on the top and I have an x squared on the bottom. So we need to rewrite this as something, which is being squared, which is going to be root 7x being squared plus 1. And now we're going to do a different type of u substitution. So here we're going to let u equal root 7x. Our derivative is root 7. So I'm going to rewrite the second half as, let's see, 1 over u squared plus 1, 3 du over root 7. And so then the second half reduces to 3 over root 7 arctangent of u, or 3 over root 7 arctangent of root 7x plus u. So my final answer is 5 14 natural log of 7x squared plus 1, plus 3 over root 7 arctangent of root 7x plus c. So two terms on top. One idea you want to try is actually separating it into two separate fractions. Okay, so let's take a look at example number three. In example number three, this is where when you do u substitution, you want to let u equal the inside function. So if you let u equal e to the negative x, your derivative is negative e to the negative x. But notice this e to the x on the bottom is technically an e to the negative x. So then you get negative du equals dx over e to the x. And so if I substitute, we're going to have 4 to the u, um, and then a negative du with this entire dx over e to the x as a result. So the integral of 4 to the u is 4 to the u over ln of 4 plus c. That's our integral for a to the x. And so the final answer is going to be negative 4 e to the negative x over ln of 4 plus c. In example four, anytime you have x's and x squares combined together, what you want to consider doing is completing the square. So 
the inside the radical, I'm going to factor out a negative. Write this as x squared minus 4x. To complete the square, I need a plus 4. So outside of the completing the square, I also need a plus. Okay, so if I simplify this, it's going to be x dx over the square root of 4 minus the quantity, x minus 2 squared, which is starting to look like an arc sine, except arc sine starts off 1 minus. So we'll factor out a 4 from the square root, which comes out as a 1 half. We have x dx over square root of 1 minus the quantity, x minus 2 over 2 squared. So now we're going to do a u substitution. We're going to let u equal x minus 2 over 2. We need to take the derivative. du dx equals 1 half. So dx equals 2 du. And then notice on the numerator we have an x we have to solve for as well. So if we solve for x, we get x equals 2u plus 2. So substituting all of that in, we're going to have 1 half. For the x, a 2u plus 2. For the dx, a 2du. And in the denominator, the square root of 1 minus u squared. So I'm going to cancel out the 1 half and the 2. Break this up into two integrals. 2u over square root of 1 minus u squared plus 2 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So notice the second half is an arc sine. For the first half, we're going to have to do another substitution. You could let w equal 1 minus u squared. Your derivative dw du equals negative 2u, which is kind of nice because we have a 2u in the numerator. So that means that negative dw equals 2u du. And I can rewrite this first integral as 1 over square root of w. Uh, negative dw. But that's the same as w to the negative one half dw. And so if I take the antiderivative of that, it's going to be negative 2 w to the one half. So my first part is negative 2 square root of 1 minus u squared. For the second half, like I said, this is just an arc sine of u. So let's bring that all the way down here. And then we got to replace our u, and u was originally equal to x minus 2 over 2. So the final answer is going to be negative 2 square root of 1 minus x minus 2 over 2 quantity squared plus 2 arc sine of x minus 2 over 2 plus c. All right, and then the final one. So the clue is that whenever the numerator is of a larger degree or even the same degree as the denominator, you want to do long division. So 4x plus 1 into 8x squared minus 7. So 2x times 4x is 8x squared. If we subtract, negative 2x minus 7. So this will be minus 1 half because negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2x minus 1 half. You're going to get negative 13 halves here as a remainder. So we can rewrite this integral as 2x minus 1 half minus 6.5 all over 4x plus 1. So the antiderivative for the first one is x squared minus 1 half x. And now we just got to figure out the last part, dx over 4x plus 1. So let u equal 4x plus 1. The derivative, what does that mean, 4? So dx equals 1 fourth du. So if I replace all that, we're going to have 1 over u. Oops, 1 over u. And then 1 fourth du. So x squared minus 1 half x minus 6.5 over 4. Natural log of the absolute value of the u. So the final answer is x squared minus 1 half x minus 6.5 over 4. Natural log of the absolute value of 4x plus 1 plus 6.